I paid Ty Lopez $25,000 to have a one-on-one -on -one session with him. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the three top takeaways for absolutely free. So those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Bashar Katu, and I'm the founder of BJK University, an education company with a mission to impact 1 million lives. This year so far, I have invested over half a million dollars in coaching, consulting, and mentors and education for my personal uh, coaching and our company as well, uh, our team, and just simply scaling and, and, and becoming better. And just recently, I made a list of people that I want to have one-on-one -on -one, you know, time, not joining masterminds or courses, but just like one-on-one -on -one time. And Ty Lopez has been someone that I've followed for years and have known about and have you know gotten inspired by. Love him or hate him, some of you might think he's a scam, some of you might think he's awesome because he's changed your life, but you know what? A lot of people think the same about me, so that's absolutely fine. I wanted to reach out to him and really just have a a one-on-one -on -one session with him. And so in this video, I wanna share with you guys the th three top takeaways. But some of you, before I get into there, some of you might be wondering, why would you pay someone 25K to, you know, to have a one-on-one -on -one session with them? And a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about how I paid Dan Locke $40,000 to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with him. I've paid uh, Tony Robbins, if you guys don't know who he is, $85,000 just to be in his inner circle. And Russell Brunson, another $50,000 to be in his inner circle as well. And there are other mentors that I've paid large uh, sums of uh, money to. You know, seven years ago, after my restaurant burned down and I actually started wanting to get online and start my online business and have long, you know, launched a couple of products that failed, I realized that whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish, someone else has that information. Someone else has accomplished the thing that I'm trying to accomplish and has done it. Whether they did it on their own or learned from someone else, it's besides the point. But why not? And instead of going through trial and error, why not tap into their knowledge? Everyone's got a price. Tap into their knowledge and just simply say, hey, teach me what you know, because people are willing to teach, right? And some people think, well, if you're so good at doing the thing, why teach your secrets? Well, first of all, they're not secrets because if you don't teach it, they can learn it from someone else. You're not the only one for the blueprint. Even going to space, you, you know, there's like three or four people that have attempted that. So you can learn from multiple people. If one of them doesn't want to share, you know, the other can share. But it's really about the impact, right? I don't know if you know, but Elon Musk has the patent to um, electric cars be an open patent. What that means is he patented something. I, I can't remember what it was exactly. I saw it in an article somewhere. He patented something that helped build electric cars and he made that patent open. That means anyone and everyone can simply go and copy his invention and do the same thing. Because in his mind is, I started it, I can probably be the best at it, but that's not the goal. The goal is he truly believes that the world needs to have electric cars because it's just better for, for humanity, it's better for everything, and he, and he truly believes that. And instead of just saying, well, I'm gonna just hold all the secrets to myself, he wants other people to also compete, and so that way all everyone together can build a better, more sustainable future for generations to come. And so that's the thing that you have to understand is that once you get to a certain income level, it doesn't become about money anymore, but it's more about the impact that you're making. So let's go back into what I was trying to talk about today. So the very first thing is, and I've got some notes here. The very first thing that Ty Lopez said is he said that you have to, to continually adapt and you need to build your portfolio and simply move where the opportunity is. And so what that means for you is look at your life today and look at what it is that you're doing, right? Maybe you're, um, you know, maybe you are uh, in a business that is kind of, it hasn't scaled as much and it's kind of going down or, or it's just kind of like stabilized. Maybe you are in a job and you're just like getting like a one or 2% raise per year and you're like, I'm sick and tired of this. Maybe you're a student, you're just starting out. Maybe you're a stay home, the dad or mom, maybe, you know, whatever your situation is, maybe you just got fired and then, you know, you don't want to really go back to doing exactly what it is. Look at where the world is going, right? And for me in 2015, up until then, I had only done retail, you know, like I, I really, not just retail, I had only done restaurants and that's the only thing that I knew. And so I knew that like the whole online space was getting big. And you know, at the time, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't early or anything, but I just knew that the world was going there because I knew nothing about it, right? <clears throat> and I knew that I needed to learn and I was just an empty cup and I started learning. But especially after 2020, I realized that the opportunity is even a lot larger, you know, like I literally over the last week, every single morning I've ordered from Amazon Fresh and from Amazon. 
And we literally have anywhere between over the last week, especially three to five packages come to our doorstep every single day, three to five packages every single day from either Amazon Fresh, like groceries, or from just Amazon, just things that we're buying. I remember things I add to my cart every couple of hours, um, I check out and bam, right? And I don't even think about it, it just shows up. I just know that it's gonna show up. I just have trust that it's gonna show up, right? And I don't even have to worry about it. So that's the awesome thing. So move where the opportunity is going. And for me, it was seven years ago, was Amazon FBA. Today, it's still Amazon FBA, and that's why I'm still stuck to it. It's e-commerce because everyone, you're probably watching, you probably shop on Amazon all the damn time. And you've probably bought some of my products or some of my students' products, right? And so that's the beautiful thing about Amazon and moving with where the opportunity is going. Number two, he said, doubling year over year is plenty and it's better to creep forward than to lead forward. And then he told me about a story how one of his friends in high school was going up some stairs and then his friend was trying to like hop two, three stairs at a time. And then one of the stairs, his foot just didn't land right and he slipped and fell on his face and cracked his jaw open and had to get like 20 stitches, right? So he said, it's better to, um, to creep forward than to leap forward, right? And what I got from that was with our business, you know, one of the years we kind of like 10 X and then we thought that we want to do that. Like we're like, all right, let's do that this year. Let's do that next year. And let's do that next year. But every time we try to like go above like two, three X per year, what happened is economics started pushing against us and we started getting resistance from just economy, from just anything, right? We try to scale too fast, too big. And then it just, you know, we had a pushback, right? So he said doubling year after year is plenty. So if you've got a business and say, you know, first year you did a hundred thousand, second year you do two hundred thousand, third year you do four hundred thousand, fourth year you do eight hundred thousand, fifth year you do one point six, sixth year you do three point two. And you see how at scale in the beginning it's smaller increments, but at scale the doubles become much larger, right? And so that's the thing that you have to think about is you know, like I understand dreaming big, that's great. I'm not telling you don't dream big, but how fast do you want to do it, right? In the beginning, you might be able to go fast, but consistently over period, long periods of time, going too fast is not sustainable. Sometimes you just have to creep forward instead of leaping forward, right? The third thing that he mentioned is, um, he said, I, because I asked, I, I asked every single mentor that I get on a call with, <clears throat> and I said, what, what are the top three things that you would do differently if you had to do your career all over again? And he literally said, my number one, my number two, and my number three for you is double down on mentors. He says he he spends, I don't know how many millions of dollars every single year um, on mentors. And he always says, find someone that's at least five to 10 years, potentially even 20 years ahead of you in whatever it is that you're trying to do and simply learn from them. He said, I, you know, when, when he started, when he first went online, like back in 2010 or 2005, I don't know when it was, he said, I started making videos on social media and talking about mentors he said I got a lot of pushback, you know? But he's like, now people are realizing like, holy shit, yes, mentors. And he's like, I used to, I was big on mentors then, but now knowing what I know, I should have done it two, three, five, ten times more. And that's why for me now, literally this year, I'm going insane on mentors. As I'm telling you this year to date, it's half year, half of the year, I've already invested over half a million dollars in coaches and masterminds and consultants and mentors and one-on-ones and this and that, right? Now I get it. You're like, yeah, Bashar Reed, you've got a multi eight figure business. You could do that. Sure. But I didn't start that way. My very first course was $500. Now it was a shitty course, but it got me somewhere. And then I got whatever money and then I invested in the next course and the next course and the next course. And then I think last year we invested maybe like a couple of hundred thousand dollars. But this year again, and I will probably invest another half. I'll probably invest a total of a million dollars this year just in coaching, consulting, and mentors alone, right? Why? Because I believe that I know that whatever it is that I'm trying to build, someone else has done it right? And it's like, why reinvent the wheel? Why try to learn through trial and error? Why not just simply go back and learn from people that have done it, right? And obviously, as you get bigger, finding the mentor that's so ahead of you gets a little more difficult and it's a little more tricky. It's easier to, if you're making two, three thousand dollars a month, it's easier to, to find someone that's making ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month to learn from. Them. When you're at ten thousand dollars a month, it's easier to find someone that's at fifty, hundred k a month to learn from them. When you're at a hundred k a month, it's still easy to find someone that's at a million dollars a month. When you're at, you know, when you've got a business that does ten, twenty, thirty million dollars, fifty, hundred million dollars a year, 
it gets a little tricky. But again, until you get there, do know that there is a ton of people that are out there that can and want to show you how it is. Because again, yes, everyone is here to make money. And no one, I don't think anyone should shy away from making money. But when you get to a certain income level, it becomes more about the impact that you have and the influence you have in the world than about just making money. Unless you're just a, you know, a sociopath and you're just blowing money left and right and you need like a hundred grand a month just to survive. Uh, and I know friends like that. They have, you know, they pay $50,000 a month on rent and, and they have like five cars in the garage. They drive like once every three months and they fly private and they do all this. And that's great. You know, they make money. They could do whatever the hell they want with money. Our company generates multiple eight figures a year and I live on seven, eight thousand dollars a month. Right. Um, why? Because that's just I don't need anything more than that. You know, at some point it got to a point where it's like making more money isn't going to make a difference in my lifestyle, but it's more about the bigger I grow our company and our influence, the more people I can help, the more people I can support. With that said, if you are someone who wants to start your Amazon business, wants to start any business, I suggest Amazon for you. Click the link below this video to learn how BJK University can help you. Outside of that, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.